Good day, everyone. I'm Maria Jessica Fabroa. Today, we're going to talk about Sipsilis and Chang Freud. Sipsilis. Sipsilis is an acute and chronic infectious disease caused by spirochetoponema pallidum, which is acquired through sexual contact or maybe congenital in origin. Stages of syphilis. The stages of syphilis reflect the time from infection and the clinical manifestations observed in that period and are the basis for treatment decisions. The pathophysiology of that disease can transmit the disease in one of two ways. The first way is called acquired syphilis, and it's when treponema pallidum enters the body through body fluids. That can happen when there are tiny cuts or breaks in the skin or mucous membranes of the external genitalia or the mouth when there's sexual contact, including oral, anal and vaginal sex. It can also happen when people share contaminated needles, or when they have direct contact with the skin lesion of an infected person, because the lesion is covered in this fluid which is rich in spirochetes. The second way is called congenital syphilis, and it's when a mother has syphilis and treponema pallidum infects the baby, either in the uterus or while the baby exits through the vagina at birth. In acquired syphilis, there are three stages to the infection. The first stage is called primary syphilis, or the early localised stage, and it usually starts one to three weeks after the T. pallidum lands on the skin or mucous membrane. During this stage, the spirochetes destroy the soft tissue in the skin wherever they enter the body, and that results in the formation of ulcers called syphilitic chancres. A syphilitic chancre is actually painless, and you can remember that by dropping in a U to make it chancure, like you're cured of the pain, if you know what I mean. These chancres have a hard base, raised borders, and are usually covered in a fluid rich in spirochetes, and this can spread to other parts of the body as well as other individuals. In individuals who acquire syphilis through sexual contact, the primary chancre develops around the external genitalia. However, for individuals that acquire syphilis by physically touching the lesion, or in some other way, the primary chancre might appear on the hands or some other part of the body. Syphilitic chancres typically heal on their own over a few months, but during that time, some spirochetes go to nearby lymph nodes, where they cause lymphadenopathy, which is lymph node enlargement. And then they get into the lymph, and finally into the bloodstream. If syphilis is acquired through something like a blood transfusion, then there may not be an early localised stage at all, and no primary chancre. The second stage is secondary syphilis, or the dissemination stage, and it occurs about 6-12 to 12 weeks after the infection. During this stage, spirochetes enter the bloodstream, which is called spirochetemia, and this causes generalised lymphadenopathy, which is when spirochetes can be found in lymph nodes throughout the body. The spirochetes like to attach to and infect endothelial cells in small capillaries near the skin. This causes non-itchy maculopapular rash, which are small bumps that are either flat or raised. The rash starts on the trunk and then spreads out to the arms and legs, and eventually to the palms, soles, genitalia and other mucous membranes. These rashes can sometimes be pustular, which means they're filled with a white fluid, pus, or they can be papulosquamous, which is when they're scaly and hard. In addition, there can be something called condylomalata, which are smooth, white, painless, wart-like lesions, and they appear in moist areas like genitals, around the anal region and the armpits. So, these various rashes can erupt all over the body, and the lesions are chock-a-block full of spirochetes, which makes secondary syphilis the most infectious stage. The rashes from secondary syphilis usually resolve within a few weeks to months. Then, after secondary syphilis is a latent phase, called latent syphilis. This is when the disease enters a dormant or asymptomatic phase. During this phase, the spirochetes can mostly be found in the tiny capillaries of various body organs and tissues. Latent syphilis can be further divided into an early phase and a late phase. Early latent syphilis occurs within a year of infection, and during that time, the spirochetes can re-enter the blood. 
So this means that during early latent syphilis, they can still be found circulating in large numbers in the blood, causing symptoms of secondary syphilis. However, the late latent phase is generally after a year, and that's because the spirochetes generally stay within the tiny capillaries of various body organs and tissues. As it turns out, there are actually only very few spirochetes which are found in the capillaries of tissues and organs. But there is a severe immune response, so severe that it causes a tremendous amount of damage to the cells there. And that triggers the next stage, which is tertiary syphilis. In tertiary syphilis, there's a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, which means that there's an immune response that's mainly led by T-cells, and they recruit phagocytes, like macrophages, and cause the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1 and interleukin-6. All of this leads to local swelling, or edema, as well as redness, warmth, and systemic symptoms like a fever. T. pallidum has three main antigens. These include group-specific antigen, which is present on all treponemas, species-specific antigen, which is specific to T. pallidum, and cardiolipin, which is a lipid antigen, which interestingly is present within the spirochetes as well as cells in our body. Now, plasma cells like to get themselves involved in the immune reaction by producing antibodies against these antigens. In some cases, the immune cells start to huddle around and form a granulomatous lesion called a gumma, and this has lots of different types of immune cells that get surrounded by an outermost layer of fibroblasts. Often, funnily enough, there aren't any spirochetes at all in these lesions, it's just like the immune cells are getting overexcited and huddling up for no obvious reason. The tissue at the centre of the gumma often ends up without oxygen, and that can lead to coagulative necrosis. In tertiary syphilis, various organs get damaged, like the heart and blood vessels, called cardiovascular syphilis, the brain and spinal cord, called neurosyphilis, and also the liver, joints and testes, which haven't actually earned their own special names yet. And diagnostic findings. Syphilis shares symptoms with many other diseases. That is why the clinical history and laboratory evaluation are important. So the conclusive diagnosis of syphilis can be made direct by identification of the spire sheets obtained from the counter lesions of primary syphilis. Serologic tests used in the diagnosis of secondary and tertiary syphilis require clinical correlation in interpretation. So the serologic tests are summarized as follows. The first is the non-chaponemal or reagent test. It includes the Venereal Disease Research Laboratory or the VDRL and the Rapid Plasma Reagent Circle Test or the RPRCT. So the non treponemal tests are usually used for screening and diagnosis. After adequate therapy, the test result is expected to decrease quantitatively until it is treated as negative, usually about two years after the therapy is completed. Next is the triponemal test, which includes the fluorescent triponemal antibody absorption test and the microhemagglutination test for treponema. So these tests are used to verify that the screening test did not represent a false positive result. So positive results usually are positive for life and therefore are not appropriate to determine therapeutic effectiveness. Next is the medical management. So the treatment of all stages of syphilis is through antibiotic medication. Example of this is penicillin J. Benzatin. It is the medication of choice for early years of syphilis or early latent syphilis of less than one year's duration. It is administered through IM at a single session and the late latent or latent syphilis of unknown duration should receive three injections at one week intervals. If the patient is allergic to penicillin, doxycycline can be administered.
now we were going to talk about chancroid. Chancroid is a sexually transmitted infection caused by the bacteria Haemophilus ducri. Causes are painful open sores or chancroids develop in the genital area. It can also often cause the lymph nodes in the groin to swell and become painful. The symptoms. The symptoms are painful red-colored bumps in the genital region that become ulcerated open sores. Next is the urethritis or the inflammation of the urethra and abnormal vaginal discharge, pain and bleeding of the sore, and dysuria. The pathophysiology of the disease. Next is the medical management. Antibiotic treatment should be initiated for any individuals with either a confirmed or presumed diagnosis of chancroid. Example of this is azithromycin 1 gram orally once daily, septriaxon 250 mg intramuscular once daily. Next is ciprofloxacin 500 mg orally twice daily for 3 days and erythromycin base 500 mg orally 3 times a day for 7 days. So here are the ways to reduce risk of chancroid. First is limiting or reducing the number of sexual partners, using protection during sexual contact or intercourse at all times, regularly checking the genital region for signs of abnormal bump, sore, or swollen lymph nodes, and talking with sexual partners about testing for STIs or their STI status before engaging sexual contact. Asking sexual partners about any unusual sores or bumps in their genital region, talking with a doctor about unexplained groin pain, getting regular STI testing, avoiding or limiting alcohol use, and avoiding recreational drug use as this may impair judgment in making healthy choices. The nursing diagnosis. First is knowledge deficit about the disease and risk for spread of infection and reinfection. Anxiety related to anticipated stigmatization and to prognosis and complication and non-compliance with treatment. Next is the nursing interventions. Advise abstinence from sexual intercourse until treatment has been completed. No follow-up culture is necessary to ensure cure. Ensure that the partner is treated at the same time and report case to local public health department. Ensure that the patient begins treatment and will have access to prescription follow-up. Explain mode of transmission, complication, and the risk for other STDs. Teach all about all STDs and their symptoms. Explain the treatment regimen to patient and advise her of adverse effects. Encourage abstinence, monogamy, or safer sex methods such as female or male condom. Stress the importance of follow-up examination and testing to eradication of infection. Thank you for watching.
that would be all thank you